Hello everyone, what's up and welcome to my experience with PHP Storm's Juni, or JetBrain's Juni. It's a pretty nice little nifty AI agent thing that you got in your client these days that seems to do an absurd amount of work for you. Um, I've just basically stuck on this project that I've had in the back of my head that A, I'm not very good at design work, alright? So, fresh out the bat, not a designer, okay? However, this tool does it for you. And I don't know how I feel about that because I'm also making it do the things that I would usually do. But to be fair, it's more the boring crud stuff that I'm making it do. I'm still having a hand to make sure it's actually not doing anything a little bit too insane. But my code's insane anyway. So really, how much does that help it? I don't really know. First of all, it completely turns off your brain. You get brain fog. That's the one thing I've noticed is that I know how to achieve the task, but just typing away into a little bit of a prompt window seems to... I don't know if it gets it done quicker. It takes a little bit of time to... Back, I've not had to do much back and forth with it whatsoever, to be honest. It's a lot better than what Cursor was. Cursor is another AI agent that's integrated into um, VS Code. Uh, they made their own sort of fork of it and then did their own thing. Um, don't know what's happening with that at the minute because I tried the trial. I don't like it. I, I stuck it on a Python app to do a bit of uh, cryptocurrency work and it didn't do a very good job to be honest. It rewrote functions, it redid things here, there and everywhere. The only thing that this has done wrong so far is I installed Filament PHP 3.3 and it went in there and made it 3.2. But that's understandable in some sense because it probably doesn't know that 3.3 is out yet. It hasn't checked the internet, it probably only thinks the 3.2 is out. A lot of the docs for the longest time said just install 3.2. Um, so I'll give it a pass on that, alright? That's the human intervention. As long as you're going to get making sure that it's actually doing the right things, it's not bad. So, as after this last night, I basically went, alright, look, I have this stupid idea in the back of my head. I don't have a design for it. I don't know really what to do for it. I, I, I just want to basically have a landing page for gamer influencer types. Like myself, alright, I'm not a fucking influencer, right? But I, I play games, I do software development, and I make videos, right? Um, one of the streamers that I've seen in the past, that I tend to watch, and I want to get hate for it, Destiny has a really, really good website. Sort of. And, um, but what's really, really good about his website is his live streaming functionality, and that you have the stream, you have his um, community DGG, DDG, DDG, and then you have a sort of chat window there and all, and, all, and all that sort of stuff. And it's his own thing. Like he'll go off stream and a thousand people will stick around just watching other streams um, and just chatting to each other in the sort of chat, spreading the nonsense as they usually do, um, which is quite cool. And I figured, why does why does everyone not have something like that? And if I could help facilitate that process, be the means of hosting it and making a cool, a cool platform, so, so to speak, then why not, all right? But it involves A, having the time to figure out design, go around the place, see what, what works in terms of um, landing pages that exist already. I probably would pay for some sort of Vue.js theme that I can sort of bring on board and use that. But, Juni seems to do that for me. So all those people in theme forest probably shit themselves right now. So this is the website it has created so far. If I go here, and I pull this out and I bring this over you see it quite easily and it's on a 4k display so it doesn't scale up and I've not modified any of the um, scaling up and down or anything like that what I asked for quite simply was a way for me to customize these details a way for me to put in plug in some some streams some some people that some content creators that I'd like to recommend on my website and I've went in and done all the sort of embedding work and got that, got that done. So it's not like, it's not perfect, if you know what I mean. Like you have to like still, you have to still code stuff. But it's a heck of a lot better than what than what I would do. Like, just for comparative sake, I made my brother a website and it looks 20 times worse than this. So I think I'm going to have it go over his with a little bit of polish because I feel quite bad now <laughs> that um, I did that for him and it's in such a bad state. I think using something like this is quite is quite neat. Um, so you can see, I asked, give me some events. It done that. Give me some latest content so I can make blog posts. It done that. 
I have a merch store that I want to introduce, it's done that. And then my community links, it's done that. And same again my little newsletter here. But you can see, look, there's a little bug down here. The, um, there's no, like, border here. The, the, the colour's the same as the background. There's, there's things wrong that an influencer, influencer-based software engineer with a cat who jumps up on a desk would have to fix. Like, what is this chaos that's happening to me right now? Oh my god. Um... So yeah, you can see down here, there's the, there's, it's done a footer for you, uh, privacy policy, all that sort of stuff. None of that's been done yet, but you can see we have a we have a foundation. We have a foundation, which is really, really interesting. So, doing Vue.js, doing CSS, doing Tailwind is one thing. Sorry, my cat is really not happening. What's up? What's up? So one really cool thing we have with a stream functionality is when you refresh a couple of times. It will load up an Asmongold Gold stream because he was the only 50k streamer online at the time. But it randomizes the streams and gives you whichever one is currently active on at that time, which is quite cool. It's not done the actual integrations with the APIs with Twitch and YouTube and stuff like that. It's told you to go and do that, which I think is good. I think AI doing gears the introduction or it heals the function names, here's something that follows all those sort of things. Now you go and read the documentation and fill out the rest. I think that's not bad. I think that's actually quite good because you're doing the sort of heavy lifting at the end of the day and you can ask it further, hey, get you quite stuck on this, this API is giving me this issue. Maybe this, it gave me the Helix API for Twitch, which is the really, really old one, so, oh well. Um, but yeah, quite cool. So this is one thing, right? It can do front end. It can do partial front end. If you were to pay for a designer to come and do front end, they would do front end way better than this. This is a gradient, a couple of gradient backgrounds, there's, there's, there's some cards here. It shows some very bog standard modern web, U, web UI elements, but it looks better than all the websites that I've built. Okay, okay it, it, it does. One thing, I wanted to, one thing I wanted to stick it on was Filament PHP, because it's a very, very popular um, sort of like admin dashboard that exists in Laravel that you can use to kind of get apps going much, much quicker. You can do all like, the front end elements that you care about, and then you can have this for actually managing that data, that crud, all that sort of stuff in the background. All you need is a model, you need your database table, and you, your resource, which you create in Filament, and then it, you can set all your form stuff and whatever else up, but it's quite, quite cool. So example, for our video streams, our Juni did this. I asked it to just give me some basic details to put in, and it actually did it quite quite well. I've never had a AI agent successfully do this because they tend to flip out when it comes to like old filament versions, old filament forms, that sort of stuff. Uh, old components that it can't really click together. What's really impressive is it used sections for the uh, forms. It usually just spits out all the components on a page and it looks ugly as anything. It actually made it look quite nice, which is um, unheard of. So, what I had asked it to do was the events and event tags. Now, I haven't migrated this yet. Wait, I have, I have, I have, I have migrated it. But if I go into this, it should just work. So, I've just asked it to do that. I want an event tag, so we'll do um, in person because we have that. We have in person there, and then we can pick a color. Now, what's interesting is it did a colour picker. Like, the AI agents would usually just put a text box in there and tell you to go and find out the hex code. It actually knows a colour picker exists in filament. That's quite cool, alright? Now, I know that's like a really, really an easy, not that big of a deal thing, but it, it kind of is. So, you can create that, it comes through. Alright, cool, excellent, we have this. We have an event count, and never even asked it to do that. It tells you how many times the event tags linked to the event. Okay, excellent. Events. We have no events right now. Makes sense. Let's make a new one. I have an event right now where on the let's see on the twentieth I'm going to do a charity stream. Right, so charity stream. We are doing charity stuff to raise money. I might even proof this. We're going to go through it in real time and see what it's produced. We have a date, we'll do the, we have a date picker, can we click that? We can, so we can do the, twi I don't know what kind of date picker this is, it doesn't look native, but uh, I'll take it, alright, so we'll do it at 22000, tags, it, it links the tags, 
And it even has the little addition thing here. That's pretty cool. Do you see what I mean? That's pretty cool. Normally AI agents wouldn't do that. They would just have it in where you could just pick the tag if even it would even do it relation, it would do it based on a relationship. But it's actually making you you can create them. It doesn't it doesn't do it doesn't copy the colour. Alright, that's that's last one favorite notice. It doesn't have the colour from the last one. But first first draft, alright? Well above and beyond. You wouldn't see some juniors doing that. Just FYI, we've me and my um manager have been using filament for a while and we only realised that that little addition thing was there on like maybe the second or third project that, that, we, that we were doing with it and we're like because we actually built on that custom element for that so that you could like click it and then we would do our own sort of addition prop pop pop up prop, like model and stuff like that but it's actually built in, in, into the um the package which is pretty cool so repeat sentence i asked it to do re re repeating events because we can have things that repeat every month or whatever so we do that, it pops up more options. I'm quite impressed so far. Alright. Monthly. We'll just do monthly. And then the call to action. So we're going to have a label on the front end. And then we're going to just do like... Uh, check out organisation. Is it organisation or is that this or is that or whatever? Is that maybe an American? And then we can just do google.com. Alright. And then active. We can create that. And that's it, it's created, it's as simple as that. I have not even touched, I've not touched a database table. I've not been into the model and had to add any relationships or fillables or anything like that. So what we're gonna do now is review what it's done. I know we're reviewing it after the fact, it's terrible on it. So it created this table. Title, short description should be nullable. That seems pretty fair. Got a date, time, date, which is good. It's using, it's using enums. It's using enums. It doesn't just put in type and then just you just put in whatever you want. <gasps> and then strings. I probably wouldn't make these nullable. This should probably but I mean if you don't want a button at the end of the day, you don't have to have one. That's not a bad idea. Yeah, okay. Then tags for events. Just defaults the the end of the colour. And there's a pivot table. Who's this? So it did pivot relationships within filament. That's kind of fucking crazy. Okay, okay. Video streams. And then that's the video streams went to the there, so I'm happy enough with that. Okay, so then how does the pivot to relationship work? Because that's interesting. Uh, okay, so it's got tags, belongs to many, yeah, and it's, de it's defined to your table, which is fine. Oh, it does a function on the model to determine if it's passed. And then creates the next occurrence. Wow. Okay, so if it doesn't repeat and it hasn't, or it hasn't passed, then it doesn't do it. Okay, that makes sense. So where, when's it doing this? That's my question. Process repeating events. Oh, so it's a command. When's it running the command? Is this a... Oh, it's doing it in the kernel. Okay, we might need to check this. I don't know if Laravel is happy. I don't know if it's a standard now in Twelve. I think you can do everything like this through the console. Peach, uh, um, this file, console.php. I usually recommend that you put it all in here now these days. But, I mean, it's, if it works, it works. I don't really care, to be honest. So, it does the stream status every 50 minutes. I don't even see that. So, it's actually updating where not the person's live. Which is pretty cool. And then, repeating events daily. Because you wouldn't want to do events every minute, obviously. Uh, yeah, and it just finds this, I suppose, uh, in here. <clears throat> and then, yeah, okay, processing events, get sure events where it's active and repeats. Well, the date is before now. Yeah, because those will have passed, okay. And <laughs> it does it, okay. And for each event, it'll try, it'll mark the current event as non-active. It creates a new one, and if it does have a new event, it ups how many it's processed, creates a new one, and then does that. So then I'm assuming this create new occurrence. Annoyingly, um, 
it's not noticing that this is part of events. I don't know why. Um, I may need to check out the blocks as to why it's not happy with this. I know sometimes doing self might cause an issue. Um, so if we just do event with that. Damn, it's been a little bit. Event, nah, it's still breaking out a little bit. Alright, that's fine. Um, it's just a bitch be stamped on me and freaking out at me. Uh, so, new day, I'll take a look at that as to why that's happening. Matches this, it literally takes a day, it copies it and then adds on a week and a month. Excellent, pretty cool, because if you have repeating events and you want the date to change, then, I mean, that's ass on you, man. Um, <laughs> it's not a repeating event then. So, new event replicate. It replicates it. What is accept? Okay, accept it as active because the as active is probably going to be made false at some point. Okay. That's it's true. Saves it and copies the tags. It remembered the tags. Man alive. Now, a lot of you are going to be like, ah, oh, come on. This isn't so simple. It is. But last month, it couldn't do this. I'm not joking with you guys when I say this. Last month, if I like sick like cursor or whatever it is on a filament PHP app and told it to do create a model, create a table, create a resource, it wouldn't have been able to do any of it. It would have imported in a vendor file that didn't exist. It would have imported in filament 2 code. It would have used live wire in some place. It would have looked at my Vue.js file and decided it was now React. It would have done something mental but i don't know what ph what jetbrains is, has done with their implementation of this but it seems to work pretty good so far i haven't had i'm not any, any issues with it i'm quite i'm quite relatively happy with this. is it perfect probably not is it anything different than what i would do for like just a little side app that i'm doing here it doesn't have to scale up to 40 million clients in a day no it, it, it will do fine it does the job it allows me to have an app that I didn't have yesterday that I can now use. Like, that's that's a win-win to me. So, let me know what you guys think about this in the comments down below. I'm going to keep messing around with this, and if I stumble across anything else insane, I'm going to just upload it raw, because I think people need to be, like, aware of, like, what Juni is doing at the minute on PHP Storm, because... I didn't get updates on mine, so I didn't even know that this was out until I looked at the release notes on Wednesday and I was like, wait a minute, this is, this is new. Just as a precursor, um, JetBrains is on the fire at a minute because this doesn't work on WSL or WSL2. Not that you should be using WSL. Um, you should be using WSL2, it's great. But it, 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 it simply just doesn't work. Um, so you have to, what I had to do was network drive my WSL network location for my like Ubuntu um, installation so code folder I have it just running off of this basically this path it, it means some stuff doesn't really work in the terminal but if you're using like, something like ddev for your local environments it's it works fine because you can just route all your commands through ddev and it works just as it does normally with containers but you can use a git as normal um, in the terminal and then you can just use juni for anything else that you need um, I've noticed, I think, if we check on this, I think it's complaining in the filament code that I don't have the files installed, despite me just showing you it working. Uh, if I look in filament and then video stream resource, you'll see here, it can't find any of this. Um, I don't know why PHP Storm is doing that, but just if you are going to start using this, you may have some weird issues around that if you're using like php storm on windows normally i think you're fine it's just for those folks that are using wsl for whatever reason um again seems to be more proof that everyone hates this i suppose but yeah that's it for my ramble i hope you learned something i hope you've seen something pretty cool um and yeah let me know if you guys want more videos like this i guess of just exploring random features and ids and stuff like that so yeah have a good one guys and i'll see you all in the next one.